Same with Sammy Gravano. You know, you, you, you weren't that 19 murders. I'm sorry, stop lying to these kids out there. And this is a very simple question. If it is, answer it. How many of them did you shoot? So people understand, you're not a shooter. You're a guy that delegated that work out to guys like me. I said, so that's okay, but stop giving that fake message. You're hiding in Arizona. You started selling drugs when you got a second chance. You didn't want to change your life. You're not an underboss. You, you, you became one of the most famous guys that cooperated. And I tried to stand for him. But when guys do things that they do, like the Machiavelli stuff and put people out front attacking me, I understand the life. And if you're such a killer, then come back to New York like me and, and come out here without your armed security. When you even met me, you had six security guys. So, you know, I'm going to call them out because I'm doing it for the kids. And John Gotti Jr., your father died on his spit in jail because Sammy Gravano put, you, put him away for life. So if you wanted to be the gangster, you should have killed Sammy Gravano. What are you coming after me for? I didn't make your father suffer and die in jail. So he didn't really care about his father. He cares about his own image. This is the problem with the mafia and how people and the young guys can't see this. I'm going to make them see it because I'm going to ask each one of them, well, tell us what you personally did. Stop telling stories about Paul Castellano or Neil Della Croce because I can do that. You want to hear a real gangster, the, the biggest gangster around that nobody talks about? When I grew up in the 70s and the 80s around these guys, these were men, you know? And then it just turned into the Wild West in the 90s for us and for Philadelphia. In 1993, there was a murder of Richard Devlin, and that really sparked everything up again. At the point of that murder, you know, five different factions came up in Boston, and we battled it out for a few years. You know, I, I lost friends, you know, I lost family members. Um, a lot of the enemy got killed, and uh, it, it was a bad time up there. Well, you know, after what uh, John and Sammy did to Big Paul and Castellano, you know, when, you know, after they clipped him, all the smaller families um, were in disarray. Now everybody's going after their bosses. And this is what started in Philly and Boston mainly, in some other parts of the country. I wasn't crazy about either one of them, to be honest with you. I don't like what was done, but I understand why John did it. You know, John Gotti was a man's man. He was a boss. I mean, I have to give him all that credit. You know, that him and Sammy get pinched and they're out of the picture and the son and Pete's there at one time, you know, and um, I felt maybe at that time they had to put back together or everything was going good with them. When you have a bitter old woman, Angel Gotti, who runs around on a computer like a 10 year old and nonstop, calls you a liar or a rat, and it's so childish. But the girl went through three divorces. Her father, his father himself, this is his father's words, called her a rat, said she's Sammy Gravano and worse. So if she can't live with that, then I'm sorry that you gotta hate me because you got no life. Go get a husband, act like a lady, act like a woman, and behave, you know, conduct yourself with respect for other kids. That anger and that hostility she doesn't know anything about the mafia. Her father didn't discuss it with her. So where's she getting her opinions from? And why does a brother allow her to do that? I don't do that with my sisters or mother or anybody. So, you know, it's it's a terrible thing the way she behaves. She should be ashamed of herself. And, and obviously she's not. Stop wasting your time with these dumb projects trying to hurt everybody. And and you, what, are you, what are you accomplishing? What is this accomplishing? You know, like I said, they can go after me forever. It's never gonna change what he did with his life. It's never gonna do that. And it's never gonna change the fact that it, they suffered, he suffered, his father suffered. His sister is, is naive and ignorant as she is, obviously is suffering and angry at something because she's not happy with her life. Because happy people don't do negative things, they do positive things. Uh, when I first came back, Michael Francis was attacking Sammy Gravano like crazy. And Sammy was an outsider, actually. People don't understand that. He became the underboss, but he wasn't the insider with Fat Andy Ruggiano or John Gotti or anybody else, but he wasn't family or friend. And there's a big difference on the level of trust of a guy with Gotti and him and or Fat Andy and some of these guys. Fat Andy's partner was Tony Lee, who was like his brother, who was very close to the family. And these are the guys that you depend on. You're not gonna depend on an outside guy 
to do any work for you. So if I needed something, I would go obviously to Anthony or Albert like I did because I know I could trust them like family members. I'm not gonna go to an outside guy and ask him, can you help me hit a guy? Because you don't have that trust value. And the same thing with, you know, with Sammy, people don't know. John never wanted me friendly with him. I said hello to him here and there because John wanted me to hit him eventually. You know, and, and people don't get, why didn't John want me to be friendly with this guy? There's only one reason. I'm friendly with everybody else. I wasn't allowed to talk to him besides hello and goodbye. So these are the things, the treachery in the life that John was smart enough to say, eventually I'm gonna kill this guy. Whether he didn't like him, whether he was jealous of him, whether he didn't trust him, whether, you know, I don't know what those reasons were in John's head. I'm not allowed to question that. All I'm allowed to do is when he told me don't talk to him, I knew I couldn't talk to say hello and goodbye and that's about it. And you know, and that day might've came for Sammy if they don't get pinched, who knows? I tried to stand for Sammy. Mm -hmm. And he backbit me. And, you know, and this is why I don't respect a lot of these guys. See, like, you got a guy like Michael Francis. Nobody's got to take my word for it. Uh, his message is a lie. He's 35 years removed out of the mafia. So these guys don't have the ability to shake somebody's hand and be upfront and gentlemen. I don't like to discuss that too much, but I'm going to discuss it today. And I'll, I'll tell you the story and what built up to that. I was close to my father. To a point. Hey. So one of his guys said something off cuff to one of my guys, and uh, they end up giving him a beating. They hurt him really bad in a coffee shop in the North End. Now, my brother Roman was a killer, straight, stone cold killer. And uh, after my guys did that, they came to me, told me what happened. When my brother Roma found out, now he's looking for my guys, you know. So at that point, my father had called me the night before that, that happened. And he says, uh, are you with me referring that I'm going to take his side against my own guys, you know? And I said that I'll never be with you. And we had words on the phone and we hung out the phone. And then the next day they bumped into each other in the 99 and my family got killed. That's the truth of the story. How did it affect me? Emotionally, it didn't. And I'll be honest with you, Steve. It's sad about my brother but, and my cousin, but things happen. This is the life. So, What did you say to people who say, oh, he just does it because it's a, it's a front or he's greedy or he's trying to get money out of it? Well, what do you say to them people who say that? If you don't like me, why do you keep watching my life? I don't follow anybody else's life. If you don't like me, turn it off. Don't listen to what I have to say. Don't follow my YouTube. Don't read my books. Don't watch my shows. What's such anger and jealousy of me that you follow me to that extent? I joke. I say I'm the Donald Trump of the mafia. They all want to they want to attack me. For what reason? You attack me once? Okay. But why do you continue watching all my shows? Why do you continue listening to me? Why do you continue to follow me? I like these keyboard gangsters and warriors when they talk about John Gotti Sr. as a man's man. Yeah, they're easy to say that because they're sitting on their couch pretending they're, they're gangsters. Well, that man died and suffered alone without family, without friends, choked on his own spit to actually live the life we all lived and, and, and go through the suffering because we know what it is to get shot. We know what it is to get stabbed. We know what it is to see family members die and get shot while we're in prison.